father forbade me from seeing him. He wasn't willing to admit that his daughter was ready for courting. So we'd sneak out at night with my long winter cape, and I'd put him under the cape. <laughs> and in the morning, we would leave the same way. <laughs> A little music. I have something I'm going to show you. This is quite the welcome. Thank you. I know you aren't happy about it, but we were in love. A father is never ready to see his daughter leave. But you shouldn't have took her to Diamond Island. It's no place for my daughter. I have plenty of friends there. We were safe. Friends, you say? It's a den of thieves. And I dare say, a few of those men learned to steal when they were soldiers, fighting for this great land. Much like you, Sam. We learn to do many things. I assure you, she was safe. Did you not have something to show me? Yes. I've been looking for a plot of land to build a cabin for you two. There's a bit of land back here. Let's go back to the party. Father, what are you doing? Yes, Father. I will dispose of you. I won't be made a fool. shall return. Do not. You do not belong here. I scarcely recognize the man I wed. That 
man stands before you. And that man shall always be that man. Here. Or elsewhere. Father. The law will be at our heels if we do not leave. It's a time when the law knew the difference between an outlaw and me. Thus began Samuel Mason's life of crime. Along with my big brother and I, he was to become the most notorious of those land pirates who stalked the Natchez Trace. Yet this was not the first blood that flowed along that passageway, and the ones like it. Twas there since men cut paths through the wilderness. Mr. Lankford, please reconsider. All but a God-fearing man would be tempted robbery upon finding such a well-to-do gentleman like yourself traveling the wilderness trace alone at night. I really must make haste, sir. If I am to meet my associate at our predetermined time. To live to meet your associate, you should remain and wait for other travelers. Do not travel alone. I really must go. Then at least wait until the light of day and remain until morning. I have a bad feeling of your leaving now, sir. It is foolhardy. Please listen to my father and delay until morning. As you wish. But I will leave at first light and postpone no longer. Put Mr. Lankford's horse away safe. Gladly, Father. Mister. Oh, I'm, I'm not the proprietor of this establishment, but I do believe the water is welcome to all who come and go. You have a delightful voice, ma'am. Well, that's nice of you to say, mister. Thomas Langford, ma'am. Oh, they've stopped for water, with your permission, of course. Yes, by all means. Those boiled eggs are just about ready. If you're ready for them, I made up some extras for you to take on the road with you, too. Yes, thank you. I'll be along momentarily. Uh, can we get the eggs, too? I'm famished. And pay with what? No. You're gonna wait. I'll kill us something along the trail. We'll eat then. How am I supposed to grow this thing in me if I'm only eating for one? I need to eat for two. We only got the one meal yesterday. I'm starving. And if I'm starving, then this baby is starving too. I said we'll eat later. And we will. Please excuse my boldness, sir, but I couldn't help in overhearing your, your predicament. May I invite you all to join me for breakfast as my guest? That is, if 
you are agreeable. We've all fallen on hard times at one point or another in our lives. Well, there's, there's no shame in taking a helping hand from those more, more fortunate when one's offered. It would be my pleasure, sir. Please. Do you imply, mister, that I can't take care of my own family? No. No, not at all. I'm merely a lonely traveler, craving some company, some conversation, nothing more. And if I can help some fine folk like you who have fallen upon hard times in the process, well, that will make me the happier still. I intended no offense, sir. Please, allow me this small indulgence. Join me. I do not need nor accept charity. What my brother is trying to say, Mr. Langford. Is we will breakfast with you. But we want to earn that meal. We'll do something for you in return. I see that you're traveling alone. Perhaps we could accompany you, provide escort for you. Where did you say you were going? Toward Crab Orchard. As are we. So here's what's going to happen, Mr. Langford. We will partake of your very generous hospitality. And then by way of recompense, we'll travel with you to Crab Orchard. My brother and I ensure and safe passage for us all. You see, as loyalist soldiers, we've done our fair share of fighting and killing when it was required. It would be an ill-fated decision for any highwayman to accost us on the wilderness road. You say you're a loyalist? To the crown? To the crown? You heard that well. Gentlemen, we have an agreement. Let us fill our bellies. Would you be so kind as to serve up those surplus eggs you prepared for me? For my new friends and traveling companions. I will no longer be traveling unaccompanied, you will be pleased to know. And if it's conversation you're after, Mr. Lankford, then sit right there. Because Sally can talk the hind legs off a donkey. <laughs> May I? Sit wherever you like. I didn't want to sit between you and your wife, sir. Uh, that would be impolite. Although I am having a bit of trouble discerning who here belongs to who is all. I don't belong to no man. And for a certainty to know one thing. <laughs> you see, when I'm with a man, it's because I choose to be. And if he ain't keeping me satisfied, well then, I simply find myself a man that will. <laughs> and this big hunk of man, he belongs to me. Mostly. And this big fella is mine. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me, Mr. Langford, are you married? I must forewarn you, Mr. Langford. 
we will be making frequent stops along the way. I may not know yet the name of this poor murdered soul, but I presume to know the names of those that killed him. The brothers Makaija and Wiley Harp. They are Tories, loyalists, murderers devoid of conscience and of mercy, and without motive. These men are named as suspects in the murders of several persons of late. The most recent being that of one of their accusers, a man named Johnson from Jefferson County. He, with others, captured the harps in the act of stealing horses, gutted, and his cavity filled with stones to weigh him down. If it were not for his remains being disturbed by the fast-flowing water, his body would never have risen to the surface and been discovered. I speculate that many more have met this same fate at the hands of the Harp brothers, but of them we may never know. The killing of Johnson has awakened a bloodlust in these men. And the citizens of Tennessee and Kentucky live in fear of them. Settlers in all sections of the Middle West are rightly afraid. Captain Ballinger, these outrageous acts must cease and these men brought to justice as a matter of great urgency. I agree wholeheartedly, Mr. Plain. Then take as many men as are willing and go hunt them down. And Ballinger, act swiftly before the trail grows cold. Yes, sir. I'll gather men and provisions and depart post haste. of these people to your own peril, sir. They will give no quarter. Sneak around and come in from behind. When I see you're in position, we'll ride in from the front. Killed with his own blade. It would have been less painful if he'd kept it sharp. You're under arrest. Hold your guard, sir. Hey, that's mine. That's so, Mr. Langford. Well, I found it, therefore it's mine. Ballinger, you're under arrest. I'm Akaja Hart. Some call me big. And I'm little. 
I know who you are. Strip these men and search their belongings. Put this one in irons. The rope will suffice for the others. submit myself to the courts and the noose without further protest. That's what you want, isn't it? If I lose, you can pass your own judgment on me. But if I win, I win our freedom. Are there any two men in all of Kentucky who will face me together? No, cowards. Get back behind the skirts of your women and stay there before I don't give you a choice in the matter. Cowards, the lot of you. Jailer, fetch some water so she can clean that wound. That was no request. You choose to dislike us. But you hardly know us. That is not a very shrewd decision. We will not be incarcerated forever. You do understand that, don't you? My brother and I, we may not be spared the noose that these women have. In a matter of time, they will regain their liberty and seek vengeance upon our persecutors and their families who will be burned alive in the beds where they sleep. Now, big man, do you wish that upon you and yours over a simple bowl of water? John Beagler, isn't it? Everyone knows the jailer of Danville. Don't be so scared, John. We can still be friends. Shall we begin again? Now fetch some water, my new friend. you, John. We're friends, aren't we? I appreciate my friends. And I think you and I are going to be very good friends. Don't you? Yes, sir. Real good friends.
how were they able to escape right under your nose, Beagler? Were you sleeping? No, sir. I don't know how they, how they got out. Maybe they had somebody helping them from the outside. And why do you remain here? As we have insisted all along, sir, we are not with these men by choice, but under duress. Those women are liars, Mr. Blaine. Allow them to stay here and deliver their evil spawn. I guarantee the moment they're released, they'll go back to their old ways. You still hold that they're accomplices in those murders, Captain? I do, sir. And I'll prove it. Permit me to follow them when they're released. I wager they'll lead me right back to their murderous husbands. Why? They only remain now because of the inconvenience of being with child. Ladies, you had the opportunity to escape today and chose to remain. When you are released, you will be free of these men and free to start over as you please. I urge you to make the most of that opportunity. Whatever your sins were, they've been accounted for. The Lord has forgiven you. Now go and sin no more. These few clothes and supplies should be sufficient to help you get back on your feet. To start afresh and follow the path of the righteousness. Thank you both. You are too kind. I was hoping to bid farewell to Mr. Beagler. Our jailer, he was most kind to us during our incarceration, but I haven't seen him for some weeks now. Mr. Beagler, I'm told, bought some land, took up the farm. Well, then let the Lord bless him. Yes. <laughs> The women disappeared downriver. Captain Ballinger pursued them for days to no avail, and he was finally forced to concede defeat, knowing they had surely been reunited with Big and I. Damn it. But he would not be the last to follow our bloody trail. There would be many more. Close. I can smell them. Where are y'all going? I'll be damned.
That's far enough, mister. Sir, I mean you no harm. That's so. My name is Henry Skaggs. I'm a long hunter out of Kentucky, and I need your help. I'm hunting the Hart brothers. All on your own? So you have heard of them. Come, have something to drink. Mister, I don't think you heard me. Oh, I heard you, and that's why I'm offering you something to drink, and that's all. Look around you. I see women and children. If we choose to do nothing, they could be next. I see the same as you, Mr. Skaggs. Women, children, and just a few able men. Now, does that look like a posse to you? The Harps are animals. With the right number of people, we can put them down for good. Mr. Skaggs, we're not soldiers here. Just simple folk. Look, I understand your want and your need to keep your people and families safe. But are any of you truly safe with the harps on the loose? My sister and her husband were supposed to be here three weeks ago. I fear the worst. You owe it to your people and you to your family to help. Don't let their fate be determined by our inaction. Mr. Skaggs, we can't help, and that's final. Now my offer of food and drink still stands. So you would fill your belly while they cut open others? That's enough. Be on your way. I shall. For your sake, I hope he's made the right choice. No, man, you might ask for help. His name's Trabu. He was once Hello, a colonel. He live in these parts? In a cabin, just a mile or so east off the road. Thanks. Perhaps your sister will find her way to you. Thank you. And Godspeed. Hold it right there, unless you want some lead in your gut. Good afternoon, Colonel. Well, I'll be damned. Henry Skaggs, set that long rifle down and come up here and pour yourself a drink. Think I'll do just that. <laughs> well, well, what brings you out this way? Well, Colonel, there's just not many men in these parts with your talent for fighting. No. At least hear me out. No, Mr. Skaggs. I am done. I got my boy here, and I'll be damned if I'm going to go out there and die on a trail chasing God knows what. I understand, Colonel. Really, I do. But I can't just stand by while innocents are robbed, torn asunder. These are ordinary folk, Colonel. They're not soldiers. Are the stories true? About the harps? Yes. 
Yes. Every damn bit of it. Every man, woman, and child. They are the meaning of horror, Colonel. Bodies found cut open, filled with rocks and thrown in the river. Whole families found murdered with their heads bashed in. I can't do it, Henry. I really can't. I got my boy John here, and he's just not ready to be on his own yet. Well, I had hope. I just can't seem to keep a group of men together long enough to catch these bastards. We get close, and they turn tail and run. You will find them, Henry. Evil always finds its end at the hands of good men. Colonel? Shh. That's Jasper. Who's Jasper? Jasper's a little boy's dog. They travel everywhere together. Some ain't right. Oh, hell. Skaggs, take him up to the house. John! John! Answer me, boy! Goodbye, little fella. I'm in. Colonel? I said I'm in. You help me bury my son, I will kill these sons of bitches. Now, with Trebu at his side, Skaggs was able to convince a lot more to do the right thing. A group of regulators was formed. They set out and scoured the land, rounding up and putting so many outlaws to justice in the name of old Judge Lynch. The regulators searched high and low, far and wide, hung and shot many. Some died that maybe shouldn't have, but the territory was made safer for the families, for the travelers. The Colonel and Skaggs searched everywhere they could for us. But as fate would have it, the death of young John would not be avenged by his father. Yes, we would meet our end eventually, but not at the hands of Trebu and his courageous companion.
I suppose it is inevitable that all roads lead to one place. And so it happens the wilderness road brought us all together. All of us bad men at Cave-In Rock. This thing any good? It ain't never failed me before, at least not till this morning. Hey! That gun didn't fall asleep on the watch. Thomas, take the prisoners to the cave. Come on. Keep them tied up tight. We'll figure out what to do with them later. Hey, Billy. You finish up over there. It must be them. All women. With babies. Traveling with no men. Maybe they're just passing through. We could ask them. No. Y'all stay away from them. This place used to be for men like us. Honorable outlaws. Now they're too far and few between, like those filthy ass harps. They show up, regulators ain't too far behind. Where are we going? I don't know. Wherever they ain't. I knew you'd come. Of course we came. If I said we come, we come. I'll be leaving at dawn. And you, you feel safe to stay, feel free to stay. But Thomas, you fetch the prisoners at sunup, they ain't going with us. We gotta figure a place to drop them. Find them. Damn it, Thomas. I told you to tie them tight. Ah! joke when you see one, don't you? You need to pack up your women and leave here. Well, brother, I guess we've overstayed our welcome. You know, we've only been here a day. No room at the inn, says the innkeeper. No room? 
Every highwayman and bandit within a hundred miles has been run out of here by them regulators looking to string you two up. Pack your women up and go. Clean that goddamn mess of a man and woman up you made down there. See you later. This was just starting to feel like home. Well. It won't be once those trigger-happy farmers come looking for the hearts. South to the trace we go. all this. It's too somber to be hanging. Where are you going? There's too much of a crowd. The women are waiting for us. Brothers and sisters, I welcome you today in two the presence of the Lord. He is here! Amen. Here with us all, right now! And his message is, he loves you, loves you all, and he wants you to sin no more. Refrain from drink and loose women. Refrain from casting a covetous eye on your neighbor. Refrain from cussing and taking his name in vain. Amen. If he loved us so much, he'd send more loose women not ask us to refrain. He loves you. Loves you like a mother. Ain't nothing you done. Ain't nothing you could ever do could make him give up on loving you. Well, in that case, I guess he's gonna forgive all the evil things we've done. And he wants you to know this love. Isn't that right, Lord? I hear it! The trumpet of Gabriel calling. Do you hear it, brothers and sisters? Do you hear it calling? <laughs> Charlatan! False prophet! Now, 
brothers and sisters, please. He fooled us all. Let's get it. Look what I done, brother. So I throws the rock and it hits the tree right aside his head, and he comes tumbling down to the ground and the horn right after him. <laughs> Oh, if you could see the faces of the crowd when the trumpet hit the ground. Keep them damn things quiet. Can't a man get no peace in his own camp? Brother, imagine those sheep thinking the Lord himself had come down to some muddy Kentucky field just because a backwoods preacher had called for it. <laughs> I said quiet, damn it. One of them regulators going to hear them things screaming. And we all going to hang for it. Come on. If that were to happen, you could just repent and call on the angel Gabriel. And he would come down and lift you up into the heavens. Ah! <laughs> Good to see preachers around these parts. A few weeks ago, the horse preacher Eli, he was found to be a charlatan. He was using a boy in a tree to be the angel Gabriel. Sacrilege. Yeah. It's a shame how our country's become so godless it needs our preachers to be so heavily armed. These weapons were gifted to us. His blessing. You can't be too careful in these parts. I hear the harps are coming this way. As have I. No doubt to ambush their sworn enemy, Colonel Trabu. I hear he's gathering regulators on account of what they've done to his boy. And they aim to have them harp brothers hanged. Terrible that, we've heard tell. Perhaps we should pay Colonel Trabu a visit. Yes. Pray for him. That would be good. I apologize for the meager meal, gentlemen. There's not much venison as I haven't been hunting in the past few weeks. I seem to have run out of powder and it's in short supply out here. Out of powder? No, gentlemen, I possibly could. Nonsense. We're taking the last of a man's meat. The least we can do is give him the powder to catch something else. Bless you, brothers. It seems you have more experience at this than I. Would you like to say grace? Let us pray. O oh Lord, we are much obliged for this food we have here. May it give us the sustenance to carry on your work. May the gunpowder we lent this man give him a successful hunt. And may Colonel Trabu 
find the harps and bring those evil bastards to justice. Amen. 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 Enjoy. While we masqueraded as men of the cloth, some believed we were the incarnation of the devil himself. No justice of man could bring our end, and soon it was an only prayer that men depended. I've got food for you. The brothers will be coming by tonight. They'll need food and a place to sleep. Must they? It's part of the arrangement. What if I do if the baby cries and keeps them awake? Keep the baby quiet. And keep your mouth shut. No names. Are you headed out? Is your home open for a, a night's rest and a meal and shelter from the storm? You're paying. Of course. Fix him some supper. You need to be moving on at first light, Mr. Love. Thank you for your hospitality. This is a fine meal. You had a good raisin. I can tell by the taste of your food. I've never heard such a thing. It's been long told that you can read a woman's raisin by the richness of her flavors. My daddy was a carpenter. And a dreamer. We were gonna live on the banks of the Mississippi River. Savages? Mm -hmm. Our flat boat ran aground. I had been terrified ever since we got on that river. The whole time I just kept thinking about my Blue Ridge Mountains. Wonder why they weren't enough for him. We were following Colonel Donaldson. He got in the current and he couldn't get back to help us. I saw what they did to my mom and daddy. I've never seen so much blood. Me and a couple of others got away. I don't recall much else after that. Except when Moses found me. I remember when he got me. And the others? I don't know. My favorite time of year on the mountain. It's winter. Snow is so beautiful. It's pure white. And the way the sun I hit it, take your breath away. This is a beautiful country. Perhaps one day, its people will match its splendor. Preacher. 
Bless you, ma'am. William Love. I'm Jameson Crenshaw. This is my brother in Christ, Malachi Johnson. Are we late for dinner? Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, we give thanks for this meal prepared by the hands of your child, and we also give thanks for this fellowship of like-minded followers. We pray your hand of protection over our lives as we defend ourselves against the devil incarnate that roams this country. Amen. Amen. You're getting quite good at that, brother. What news of the harps? Hmm. They hadn't been seen but in a few days. But Squire McBee had visitors a few nights past. His dogs kept him at bay. Could have been savages, but McBee swears he could feel the harps in his bones. Claims that he could smell evil. Squire McBee was lucky. His good dogs were a distraction. Don't confuse luck with the deliverance of our Father's grace. It is his hand alone that saves us. Indeed. What brings you to the trace? The Lord leads us where he needs us. You'll only find carnage behind the harps. It don't matter. Go west or, or go back east. They'll kill you for your guns alone. <laughs> I hear they'll kill you for less. Thank you for the meal. I'd like to wash up, get some rest. Mr. Love is up in the loft. There's room in the barn. No, 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 I won't hear of it. It's not safe. I'll be parting ways at dawn. And anyways, there's enough room up there for all three of us. Mr. Love, you have such a generous spirit. You shall be blessed. Coffee? I didn't hear Mr. Lovely. Oh, he departed. A long time ago. Just let her cry, ma'am. It's only natural she makes it sound like that. It is a cold morning. 
Shall I keep the fire going? Yeah. Uh, you look just like my little one. Seen the smoke and come a running. I won't stop until they're dead. I've seen enough death and enough blood. Let the law take them. Like hell I will. It can't be. I'm going to get my horse. Y'all be ready. They'll kill us all. You're either with me, or you're dead, McBee. Damn it to hell. You can use all the firepower I can get. But I get the kill. Both of them. back for us later. Doesn't seem like you care too much for us these days. We can't go on. You're growing fearful. I'm not gonna hurt you. Never gonna catch them. Easy, Stephen. Bodies of my wife and child were too hot for me to touch. Watch out for that tomahawk, or it's gonna end up stuck in your back. <laughs> Where'd they go? Are you going after me? Gonna stay with all these bitches?
He gave me his powder. You shot him with it. He's still breathing. Well, not for long. Hello, Moses. If he dies, let him die. If not, deliver him to Danville. Wake up! I want you conscious when I cut your head. Water. Moses! Ain't what you seen enough? I killed my brother Bart in a fit of rage. It's my only regret. He didn't deserve to die like that. You're a goddamn rough butcher. You can't only be damned. There they left his head as a marker for all to see, as a warning to all of our kind. Susan, Betsy, and Sally went on to live normal lives, almost as if their past was only a nightmare. And of the one who got away, I vanished from sight, but would soon return along another road, the Natchez Trace. You know who that is? That's the remains of a villainous outlaw. Some called him Big Heart. They placed his skull there two years ago as a warning to other outlaws, like myself. You know who I am? Yes, sir. You're Captain Samuel Mason. Captain? You fought for our independence. Not many have remembered so. You were one John Swaney. In charge of carrying the mail from Natchez to Nashville. A dangerous journey for a man to be making every two weeks. Yes, sir. Big Heart. He was no outlaw, though. No, not him. He was a savage and a brute. No regard for the life of man, woman, or child. He'd slay anyone that got in his path. Hell, he was more savage than the savages. As many times as I've been through these woods, I've never noticed. I slept under that very tree not very long ago to find rest under the remains of such a man. No harm will come to you. I'm here to find out about what you've heard on your travels. They say, sir, that you're a gentleman robber. <laughs> well, that I am. A gentleman and a robber. Now, Mr. Sweeney, I think you can do better than that. I'm not sure what news I may have that would be any value to you. All word is of value to someone. Where would that leave you? I'm betting you're privy to a lot more information than you know. I've heard tales that I've been associated with the likes of him. Sir, there's been some talk. Well, go on. There's a tale that there was a traveler passing through Natchez. An older woman there stitched $600 into the clothes he was wearing. He was found robbed and killed 
breakfast a few days later. What does that have to do with me? Well, in detail, they say your men are the ones that did it. Some say they saw your men in the area when it happened. Some say your gang has taken up the traditions of the harps. Killing, not slaughtering like them. A damn lie! God damn lie. I don't kill for the sake of killing. Not like those despicable sons of Tories. I don't kill no one. But I can't account for the actions of each and every one of my men. Rarely, and under the duress of circumstances, my men may not have been given the choice. But to be compared to the brutality of a filthy harp. Nobody who's met you thinks so. Nobody, sir. If I may speak true, it's just rumors to try to turn the people against you. Sweeney, I asked, and you told me, that's fair. I will call on you from time to time. For now, carry on your route, but tell no one that we spoke. And sleep sound, knowing that you have no fear from me or my men. That, sir, I will guarantee. Captain. The rivers are swollen up north. They'll be heading this way. It'll just be a matter of time, maybe a week. If I were you, I'd stick to the higher ground. Fay was coming back when we heard you getting close. Bit jumpy, I guess, after last night. What happened? We was ambushed. There were six of them. But you could tell that the old man was in charge. Mason? Yes, sir. That's a name he used. Was anybody wounded? No, sir. Not a soul. The old man? He only let them take half our food. Took a couple pack horses and most of our weapons. And God only knows what else. They took my only pants. <laughs> <laughs> what? You lot think you have riches big enough to fit? <laughs> what are we going to do? We need our supplies. I can spread the word at the next settlement, but it'll be a day before somebody can get here, if then. Robbers will be gone two counties by then. I think the only thing for y'all to do is form up and go after them. They're not gonna use anything that they don't need.
<laughs> I fell my pants. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Gentlemen, you best collect your assets. Move on. Never look back. You'll see me again. Captain Mason, Thomas, it's splendid to see you both again. I trust that you were thirsty. The last few months have been good. They most certainly have. There are now more people moving to and through Natchez than ever before. With good fortune comes concern for caution. Thomas said we shouldn't show our faces when we ride into town today. And after seeing some of the looks as we rode in, I believe him to be right. Sir, I do have some urgent news for you. There's a Colonel Baker in town who is stirring the governor against you. He is rushing him to make a proclamation for your arrest. I'm distressed to say I only heard this moments before your arrival. There's no word as to when he may do this. The reward of $900 for your capture was mentioned. <laughs> He's just mad because he let an old military man get the best of him. <laughs> the best thing he could do was accept defeat and move on. Alas, Traeger he'll always be. And he didn't even attempt to raise his pistol against me. He just stood there, shaking embarrassing himself in front of his men. I know the type. I must say I'm concerned that a posting of a reward may bring trouble against you sooner rather than later. Anthony, I think we need to cut this conversation short and continue at a later time. Mr. Glass, it is always a pleasure. Madam Abagé, that pleasure is mine alone. Please, may I introduce you to Captain Samuel Mason and his son, Thomas Mason. It's a pleasure to meet such a gentleman and so well known for it. If the talk around here is true, why don't you come see me down near the hill and unburden yourself with those gentlemanly ways? Well, I may have a wife. She is distant in many ways. Mr. Mason, there's no need for such unnecessary revelations. Madame, as much as I would love to enjoy your exquisite company, our time here will not permit. And as it saddens me, I do expect to see you very soon. Make sure he knows the way, would you? I hate for him to get lost. When time permits, Captain. We should go. Let us take our lead through the back. Our horses are out front. Take leave, partner. Shall we? on the jury. If I had my say, they would have hung those rampants, killers, the dub to have. No pity for them. Liar!
you just punished an innocent man. And the next time I'm punished, mark my words, I'll be guilty of sin. Ha! Ha! I've been waiting two full days for you, comforted by the thought of blowing off your head. And what did my son and I ever do to harm you? And what gave you the right to proclaim that we should hang for a crime we did not commit? Nothing gave me the right. If I was wrong, it was only because the Colonel and Mayor dead set you were the ones that done it. I was just following orders. Please, please, I beg you, I have a wife and youngins. Get down on your knees and say your last prayers. Take your hat off. Do you talk to God with it on? Pray, I said. Oh, Heavenly Father, protect my helpless wife and youngins. Spare their lives and spare my life. Sir. satisfaction of splitting your skull is not worth the sin I'd have to carry for eternity. Let me say, you might just be the last fortunate man I meet. Spotters confirmed that there were six of them. So we mounted up and I led out 14 men, feeling very confident that we was gonna kill them quickly and get back to our mundane soldiering. Well, when we got close, I could see that we were flanked by hundreds on both sides. The first group let me pass. Before I could turn my horse around, I could see my men dying right before my very eyes. Tomahawks come raining down from more men than I could count. fell from my horse, and I was crawling through all the fury while being trampled by all the horses. And unbeknownst to me, Captain Ogle had rushed from the fort with 12 men of his own, ignorant to the numbers he was fixing to face. But he caused a distraction. 
which allowed me to crawl under a felled tree. And I laid there hiding until all the Indians fell. Me and my 14 men had rode in to over 400 Indians that was hiding in the corn, in the grass, just like ghosts. Out of the 28 that faced the hundreds, only five of us lived. Father, these two were making so much noise, they didn't even hear me when I rode up on them. And I wasn't even trying to be that quiet. This dark one here had this one tied up, stringing him behind his horse. He said he wants to join us and brought this bounty hunter as a token. He's got a reward paper with your name on it. I ain't hunting nobody. I promise you. I swear to God. Two days ago, I woke up with this man standing over top of me with a knife. And that son of a bitch wouldn't give me no water. He made me piss myself. Now what kind of a man makes another man piss himself? Where'd you get the paper? I was giving it to pass along. Sir, I ain't no bounty hunter. I ain't outfitted for it. I was giving that paper in that chest just to pass along. Billy, go get that paper. The man that gave me it said he was going to make sure that paper was on every fence post between Natchez and Nashville. Sir, I'm just walking to Nashville to care for my mama. God's word on that. Nice like tonight. Make me feel grateful. That I can reminisce here with my patriots. We are free men living on free land, given to us by the good Lord above and our very own blood. We choose our own path path that is different from the other crooks. The real crooks want to bend men at their will by making up laws and writing proclamations. The noble governor calls us pirates and robbers. <laughs> well, hell, he's got us there. <laughs> They say that Samuel Mason is the leader of the banditti, along with a man named Hart. Why, oh why, do they associate our good name with such dishonorable heathens? How much are we worth, Captain? 
$2,000. I think I'll find Little Heart myself and deliver his head to the governor. Let this man be gone so we can go take care of his mama. He ain't gonna do us no harm. Thank you. And you, you say you want to join up? Yes, sir. What's your name? Seton, sir. John said. And so I found myself in the company of Samuel Mason's gang and on the run from our own countrymen, we made our way into Spanish territory. I thought I heard something. Who might be Samuel Mason? I am. Who the hell are you? Captain Vasquez of the Spanish militia. Mr. Mason? I place you under arrest. I have broke no law. You have the wrong man. Your days of piracy have ended. You must prove these false lies. I demand to face my accusers. You only have to face me. The magistrate. Some of you have no avenue for escaping the executioner. A few may have a path if you so choose to go. You have accusations of activity from scoundrels on the trails and the waterway. There may be leniency for one, perhaps two, if you're willing to testify. I have been taken hostage by these men. He has taken me hostage. I've been afraid to speak, but I've seen things, terrible things, of which I was not a participant. <laughs> I am 
John Seton. Just a farmer fallen prey to these men. As I told you before, they've taken me captive. Samuel Mason. He is an evil man. I've heard them talk, all of them. They're all murderers and thieves. My only hope for survival was to pretend as if I was one of them until I could escape. Your arrival gives me only joy. What have you heard them speak of? You must protect me. He does not speak for me. For or against, his hands are as red as anybody in this room. I have heard them speak of the river, having spies to board the boats and lure them ashore where they wait. And the women, they have women to wait by the roadside and summon the passers-by so that they may be robbed and killed. Oh, lies! Silence that man. Why should I accept what you say is the truth? Perhaps you're Samuel Mason, out to save your own soul. Samuel Mason has already confessed to his identity. Do you have the name of John Seton on your papers? An innocent man would come forward. I have nothing to hide. I don't know what was being said over there. Rest assured, he was only trying to save his own skin. Mr. Seton says you are the outlaw Samuel Mason. Yes, sir, I am. But I am no outlaw. My boy and I are farmers. And that is none other than the man named Wiley Harp over there, better known as Little Harp last alive of the two brothers. I have heard of this man's reputation, as well as yours. I would say yes. But he's the one that's been doing all the robbing and killing, using good folks' names, like mine, to deceive the authorities. What do you know of these crimes alleged? I do not know anything other than what I've heard. I have not participated in any crimes. What of taking Mr. Seton hostage? I took him in for labor, only to be told by a traveler his true name. A traveler? Yes, a traveler that was so scared to be seen with him that he left in haste. It would appear no one here knows how to speak the truth. You have no proof of any crime that has been committed here. You must release us there will be need for answers for what has happened here today. Oh, you will be released to the authorities on the American side of the river. They can have their way with you. This is an illegal extradition. The Americans will soon be here, and they will take you to Natchez. I was once a soldier, like you. You know what's gonna happen 
when we get to Natchez. Let's set aside our differences. With our combined efforts, we can still escape. Even if it means my sudden death, I will never join forces with the likes of you. Bringing you into our company is the second biggest mistake I've made. And the first? Leading us down this road. Captain Vasquez? I'm Captain Ballinger. I have papers for these men. The rest of my men are watering the horses around that bend in the river. Yes. I've followed you all the way, Mr. Harp. doing here? I got word they'd come fetch you. Figured I could be of some use. I see you made your way into the Mason gang, just like we planned. There was no plan for those Spanish bastards. If it wasn't for them, I'd have Mason by now. We could make our way back up river to Kentucky. I will collect the bounty. He can't be far. Before they reach us. Not without you. 
this began together and that's how it shall end. Go. And live as if it never began. Go, Thomas. Pleased you came to my rescue. I had to make sure you were indeed dead. You didn't want to be looking at your shadows for the rest of your life. Harp, we got to get out of here. I think they just killed your boy. They'll find you, too. Not before I kill you. Our time has come. Another day to net you. Yeah. Need some fresh clothes under the hill before we turn them in. That stuff helped keep the rod away, and bounty hunters use it collect their reward. Been known to keep slaughtered meat putrefied for a week or more. Otherwise, you could pass off anyone's head as an outlaw's. <laughs> it is true. Hell, a couple of days of rot, you could even say it was your own head. I reckon. Would be nice if they thought I was dead. Mm-hmm. Yep, it's just too bad we don't have another. We could collect on both. Too bad. John Sutton, to whom do I inquire about the bounty? Bounty? What I allowed you kill? Samuel Mason. But we received word he escaped the Spanish envoy. And I found him. A 
what was left of him after the fight. He was a formidable foe, certainly. But I did him in. And I was able to snuff out the life of one of his confederates. Wiley Hart. I do not know much about this bandit, but I do know that he goes by the name of Little Harp, and he's as much a scoundrel as his older brother. That man is Little Harp. I knew him years ago when I was in Danville. She's right, that is Little Harp. My name is John Set. He has a mark under his last breath, a scar given him by Captain Ballinger. Ugh. Of course, I was tried and found guilty of multiple crimes. They sentenced me to hang by the neck until dead. Some of the townsfolk cut me down and decapitated my body. My head was placed on a pike, a warning to others lest they follow the ways of these outlaw men. The rest of my body was buried and then exhumed for some did not want it near town. I was finally laid along one of the many roads where my kind and I made our way. And that is where I still am today. <laughs> 